Hey guys, this is Aaron. It is time for Skill Builder, which right now seems to mean more dynamic components. Um, I don't know how many more we'll do. I mean, there's always more to do in dynamic components, but I feel like we need to mix it up and maybe get some other modeling techniques in there. So we'll see. Let me know, let, let me know what you think in the comments down below if maybe we take a break from dynamic components for a little bit and come back to it. Um, maybe you love this so much that this should be its own series. Let me know what you think about that too. I uh, love to make videos that you guys like to watch, of course, but I don't want to neglect people who aren't as advanced as dynamic components and let them see some regular just SketchUp modeling tips and tricks as well. So let me know your thoughts down below and uh, we're gonna hop right into it with something new, which is repeating components. All right. So here's what we're going to do. So this technique can be used for any time components repeat. So this could be something like a lot of examples show a fence or a bookshelf with multiple shelves. We're going to make a ladder. So I'm going to start real simple. I'm going to start, and this is going to be a clunky ladder. You guys, th this is like my medieval siege ladder. Okay. So don't, don't give me too hard a time about this. I'm going to make a two by two square. And I'm going to pull that up to, I don't know, we'll say 10 feet just to start. All right. I'm going to triple click that. I'm going to make that into a component and that's going to be the side of my ladder. I don't know what the parts, I know the parts of horizontal parts are called rungs. I don't know what this part is called. So I'm going to call it the side. I'm going to create that. I'm going to grab a copy of it. I'm going to copy it over here, 24 inches. And I'm going to grab both of these and make that into a new component. And I'm going to call that my ladder. All right. So far, so good. Simple stuff, right? So we created a component. We made a copy of the component, put that inside a component. As we're looking at, okay, here's this piece. So one of the things that's going to happen right now before we do anything else, just want to touch on it is because I copied this component, they're both called the same thing. I don't love that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explode. Let's see what happens when you explode a component inside. Oh, look, it goes away. So if I explode this one too, ooh, look, now my component has no information in it. These are just raw geometry. Kind of cool. All right, but now that I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and grab this. I'm going to make this a component. I'm going to call this the left side. This is assuming, of course, that a ladder has a front and a back, but we're not going to get into that. I'm going to select this, make a component, call this the right side. Awesome. So now we have a left side and right side. I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to temporarily put a line here. I could use inferencing, but sometimes I like to use lines just to make it quick. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Hit the modifier key to draw about the middle. And my rung is just going to be just a one inch square. So I'm type one comma one, hit enter. All right, there we go. I'm going to take that across to the other face, triple click, make component, call it a rung. All right, at this point, we have everything we need to make our component. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say we want to control the length of this ladder. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to set an attribute for my Z length. I'm not going to put anything in right now. Right now it's 120 inches, 10 feet tall. Beautiful. Rather than typing the length, I want to actually use the scale tool to stretch it to length as needed. So I'm going to say add attribute, scale tool. And when you click scale tool, it's not like other tools. I don't, I don't have the ability to put in text here. Instead, what I do is I hit the little button for details and I can control which handles show up when I use the scale tool on this component. So what I want is just this scale along blue. I'm going to turn all the other handles off. So now if I hit scale and grab this, I'm just going to have one handle at the top, one at the bottom, and I can stretch the length and apply that. All right. Now for the simple stuff, both my left and right side, I want to add a Z length and I'm going to set that length as equal to whatever the Z length of the entire ladder is. Again, we're starting off simple. This should be something you guys 
probably I could have even said just go do this and you guys would have had it if you've been following along with the last two months of uh, skill builders. All right, so if I look at the code there, awesome. All right, so let's come out here. If I select it, you see I don't have any options. There's nothing here, but if I hit scale, I get that one tool, I can stretch it. Really nothing too exciting because the fact is, these could just be raw geometry at this point. The magic, and I use that term loosely, there's air quotes around that, magic, is going to come in having this rung repeat. So let's look at how to do that. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go add some attributes to the rung. So the first one I'm going to put in here is Z position. So I am going to, with my attributes, control where this rung is at. I'm not too worried about some of the other things. I'm not really worried about resizing anything like that. I just want to tell it where it's going to be with the position. The other thing I'm going to put in here, I'm going to add an attribute for copies. Because I'm going to tell it how many copies I want based on how long the ladder ends up being. And I'm going to add an attribute here. I'm going to call this attribute spacing. This is a custom attribute. I've had a couple people on past videos ask about what a custom attribute is, and this is it. This is something that's not already in the list, and you can call it whatever you want. So I'm adding this because I want to potentially give the user the ability to change the spacing. So right now, I'm going to hard code my spacing to 12 inches. This is getting pretty close to what we want to end up with. So here's the first question. Copies. How many copies? Well, I want to take the number of copies and divide it by the length. So I'm going to say this is equal to my overall length. I'm going to go all the way up here to the top, not pick an attribute from one of these other pieces, but from the main component. So it's equal to this length divided by my spacing. And I'm going to hit enter. All right. So you can't see it, but it actually just went in there and drew a bunch of copies right here. So if I come in here, actually, if I go grab one of these and move it, see how there's more there? There's actually a bunch of copies that it made as soon as I typed that code in there. Cool. So that's good. So we know it made a bunch of copies. Problem is they're all on top of each other. So let's figure out how to change that. So I'm going to come into my Z length. This gets a little bit, this can get confusing, I'll be honest with you, because we're going to set the Z location of all the copies with one value. So this can seem a little bit odd. But what we're going to do is we're going to tell it that we want to make this equal to, and then I'm going to put quotes in here because I want it to, to the, the positioning to be equal to the spacing minus one. I'm putting spacing minus one because I have a one inch rung. So if it's 12 inches from one to the next, I want to account for that one inch of the rung. Because if I don't, then they're going to be 13 inches apart because that rung is going to be added in there. So I'm going to type that plus the copy times spacing. And I'm going to hit enter. So what I told it was, I'm going to go through that again. It's equal to the spacing minus one. So in this case, that's 11 plus whatever copy it is multiplied by the spacing. So that means copy number one is multiplied times 12. Copy number two is two times 12 is at 24 and so on up the ladder. So if I go check the length now, I'm just going to come in here. Whoops, accidentally. Put another letter in there. That's not good. All right. So if I come in here now and I go how far from here to the top of the next one, it's exactly 12 inches. So that is perfect. But the keen eyed among you have already said, hold up. Why is there an extra piece up here? This is fairly standard because our first copy is not at the end. Our first copy is set in. So that means as I take my whole spacing, it's measuring from this point up the full length of the ladder. So there's always one extra. So what I'm going to do, and this is, this is pretty, pretty common. What I'll do 
is I'll come in here to my copies. Oh, escape, escape, sorry. Click into my copies and put minus one. That's going to get rid of that last copy no matter what, because that last copy will always fall outside of the length because the first copy is always pushed in by one spacing. So let's test this real quick. If I do go to scale, make it longer. So when you initially start stretching, it's going to deform the geometry. Look at that. See that? That's ugly. But as soon as you release, it will recalc and put those lengths in there. All right. So I got something that I can see is happening. You guys see that? Look at my Z height. As I'm distorting this, it's squashing my height of my rung. So I'm still, it's still accounting for that one inch. So if I go from one to the next, it's still at one foot, but it's squishing that. So what I have to do is I have to come in here to my rung. To fix that, I'm going to come in here, add attribute. I'm going to add a Z length attribute, and I'm going to hard code it to always be one right now. I'm just going to type equal one, enter, and then they all move. And now if I come out here and I scale that, they'll stay one inch after they redraw each time. So that's good. Honestly, that's not too complicated. The beginning part did skip over some stuff because I just couldn't go over adding a length again. But hopefully you picked up something new with that and it built upon the last, I don't even remember how many we've got now. Is this seven, eight, nine, something like that? Couple months worth of skill builders. Uh, if you did pick up something new, let me know down in the comments below. If part of it is still a mystery, let me know that too. And if you have an idea that you think would make a great skill builder, please leave that. Subscribe if you haven't already. That way you'll be notified the next time a skill builder video comes out. We put out a couple videos a week and you'll be notified if you hit subscribe. If you liked what we showed, click like down below. It's always good to get positive feedback. But like I said, most important thing is leave that comment. We like making these videos a lot, but we like making them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.